Welcome to Nine Bob Note with Paul Isles Rush and Ken Moss. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nine Bob Note. I'm Paul. And I'm Ken. Good afternoon, Ken. Good afternoon, Paul. It's your turn this week. What have you got for us? Elon Musk. Oh, the, uh, the world's first trillionaire. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, a, a very, very rich. It's hard to decide whether he is just like a, a massive, unlikable nerd or or, or a, a huge supervillain. It's very, it's very, very uh, distracting. We don't know very much about him apart from uh, that he has uh, just bought Twitter for mm. forty four billion dollars, um, <laughs> apparently because uh, because he wants to defend free speech on Twitter. Although every time anyone's mean to him on Twitter, he blocks them. Uh, so I'm not sure how that works. And when I say mean, anyone any times anyone says something that he doesn't agree with, he blocks them. So yeah, I, I assume that by protecting free speech, he means you can say what you want as long as it's something that I agree with. But yes, he sort of seems like he belongs in a, a rubbish James Bond film. If there was going to be a Bond villain, he would be it. It's um, He's a very strange character as Elon Musk. Uh, he's risen to prominence only really in the past few years, because certainly 10 years ago, I'd never heard of him. No. Uh, but he's, he's now joined that select club of multi-billionaires like Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos and uh, Bill Gates and what have you. And they're, they're all slightly odd men. <laughs> uh, but he, he is pushing the envelope of oddness. Um, he was in a relationship and indeed fathered a child with Grimes. Grimes yeah. And the name of the child is some sort of quadratic <laughs> equation. It's, um, yeah, as Eddie Izzard once put it, what should we call our child so it doesn't get the shit kicked out of it at school? <laughs> <laughs> mm, that'll do. I mean, on the other hand, he's made his company Tesla has made mm. huge advances in. Uh, I mean, it, it's. I suppose when you get to that stage, you're just playing at it, really. I've got this image in my head of a a car that drives itself, and well, it's quite difficult to do that. I don't care. Just make <laughs> it for me. <laughs> and when you get to that, I want to. I want my own spaceship. What is it going to cost a bit? Well, yeah, I've got a bit. Just fucking build it. And I, so you can see these, <laughs> these crazy Bond-esque meetings behind closed doors. But Steve Jobs, he was another one, the, the um, former chairman of Apple. Yes. The late Steve Jobs. But again, he, I seem to remember an interview with him at some point where he said, you know, I just, I just come up with ideas. People who are much more brilliant than I am actually realize those mm. ideas. I, I come up with the things that I want to see in the modern world that will actually be useful. They're not just another toy or a gimmick or something that's uh, the latest fad. I want to make things that there's a logic to them and that anyone can use and that are, are genuine. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not a great lover of Apple stuff. It just doesn't work very well <laughs> when you want it to do anything. Um, it's awkward stuff. And if you don't have Apple stuff and you try and do non-Apple stuff with Apple stuff, it, it doesn't work. It just goes off in a sulk and will take all your files with it. <laughs> but Tesla and, and what he's doing, I mean, I can't knock that. I think when you've got, I think his personal fortune is estimated at something like £260 billion pounds, yes. a dollar. <clears> so that, I mean, it's a lot. He's the richest man in the world. I think he can probably afford to be a little bit eccentric. Yeah. But he is actually doing... It's like a lot of the other billionaires, though. Uh, Bill Gates is, is another one. People go on... And, look, if they gave away 1% of their wealth, you could cure poverty and all that. Well, no, you're just giving away 1% of money that isn't yours. And they're not just sat on a colossal bank account <laughs> with $260 billion. <laughs> I think that's his, his combined wealth, including his assets. But he's not just gone out to work nine to five and earn $260 billion. He, he's built up an empire that employ thousands of people and create products that people want to buy and, and that are driving forward. Bill Gates, uh, I was, he was on Desert Island Discs a few years ago, mm. and I didn't know anything about the man beyond um, Microsoft and what Yeah. You listen to what he's done with his fortune. He gave up Microsoft years ago. He's sort of got a, he's still got a toe in the water, but he's not really the driving force mm. behind it anymore. But he said, I've put my money to other uses. He went, he swayed across Africa and Asia, curing things like polio. And I think the only one that he's got left to do is, so the next, next big topic is malaria. 
Yeah. You know, that's the one I want. So the, the eradicated polio one, I think smallpox, I think. But there's about three or four major diseases that have been eradicated because he's gone out there and put that money to good use. They're not... Mm. So I, I do have a slight problem with people when they go on about oh, how much money they've got. It's absolutely obscene and... Maybe it is, but somebody's going to do it. It's just the way the world works. Yeah, hating people because they've got a lot of money is, well, it's just jealousy. Really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Elon Musk, though, the, the United Nations put out a report uh, a few years ago, which said they believed that world hunger could be eradicated with $6 billion, which for, to me... That doesn't sound very much. No, it doesn't sound very much. But Elon Musk said, right, Fine, show me the figures, show me the breakdown, and I'll give you the $6 billion. And so they did. They called, they called his bluff and they laid it out. I don't think it was a, a sort of permanent, no one will ever be hungry mm. again, because obviously you have things like droughts and things like that. But it was to put in infrastructure and, you know, and yeah. things like that. And they, they said, here is where the $6 billion will be spent, and you will see that this will drastically reduce mm. world hunger. And uh, he didn't do it. <laughs> and he bought Twitter for $44 billion instead. <laughs> but but even even if, I mean, because like your your face then when I said that, and it, even when I was reading it, it was like $6 billion does not seem like an awful lot of money. Mm. However, especially considering how many billion pounds did uh, our government spend on the track and trace <laughs> system during COVID. But if they give you a plan, and and yes, it is one of those that why should he give six billion dollars of his money? But the United Nations, who are you know, they they don't just make things up as they're going along. They you know they will have looked into it and they've said, look, if you can give us six billion dollars, here's what we'll do with it, and here's the results it will yield. Mm. Surely that would have been nice, but then as you say, he's I mean, not six, the only one. Well, no, but six billion dollars is uh, what would that be? Uh... God, the maths is a bit off tonight. It's um, what's that? Three percent, say, of his uh, of his personal mm. fortune, and it's all good and well for these people to say, "Well, if he gave away just one percent of his uh, of his personal wealth, fine." But that's on paper. That's uh, you know, all his assets. That's one percent of his wealth would be like two and a half billion dollars. Mm. It's a reasonable amount of money just to spaff out of your wallet uh, <laughs> on a whim because people, well, that you should give that away. Would you give away one percent of your earnings to? A tramp. I mean, 1% of, I don't know what it'd be, probably you know, a few hundred quid. But you'd begrudge a few hundred quid because it's that makes a big difference to to you. A few hundred quid, you know, that's a, a month's worth of, you know, you might earn, I don't know, 25 grand a year, whatever. whatever. 1%, well, why should I give it away? They've not, it's all right coming cap in hand, you know, give away, give away. But nobody's given me that money. I've I've earned that. Yeah. And it's no different with the billionaires. I mean, mm. all, all right, the scale is vastly increased, but they're not just sat on a colossal pile of gold <laughs> on a, in a throne with a crown on and, and just they've earned, they've got where they are through work. Yeah. It's not like... Uh, that's the bit I've never really got with people, this horrific jealousy that why, why should these people have all that money when I've not... Yeah, and and it, the expectation that you've got all that money. It's like you say, if someone asked me to give 1% of my money, I mean, that wouldn't make any difference to world, world hunger. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it'd be like, well, why, why should I? And I, I suppose if you had 200 odd billion pounds on the books, yeah. get, you know, as you say, it's not in your, your nationwide currency. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just put it on my debit card. <laughs> So you 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 like well why yeah no, nobody else did Bill Gates has been a billionaire for far longer and the United Nations hasn't asked him to eradicate mm. world hunger I mean yes he's eradicated many many diseases in Africa but Joanne uh, Rowling has she been asked to give money I mean she does give away money to uh, uh, people who are suing Calm storm yourself, walls, so, <laughs> so she probably hasn't got much spare but it, it's like. Why, yeah, why, why pick on Elon Musk and then paint him to be this villain for not giving away six billion pounds of his own money? It's jealousy and also a, a little bit of bitterness. Oh, well, I could have, uh, <laughs> I could have come up with a, a self driving electric car. Well, why didn't you then? One of the things that I often sort of get into, well, not, not debate about, is when 
people talk about footballers mm. and footballers who, who are getting paid, you know, however much, £500,000 a week. And, yeah. oh, it's stupid money. Well, yes, it is stupid money. But if my boss came up to me or, you know, if someone from a different organisation than the one I worked to worked at came up to me and said, I want you to do exactly the same job, but for us, but I'm going to pay you £500,000 a week. I'm not going to say, oh, no, no, that's stupid money. <laughs> of course that's I'm going to say. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, it is obscene. It is. Um, but the one thing I'll say about foot, I mean, that's a, a completely different scale altogether. But football has become this self-generating monster. I, I am not a fan of the footsie ball. I <laughs> periodically uh, cast a wry eye over it when there's, when England are playing. That's about the extent of it. And it's, even then, it's just an excuse to have a drink with my mates, really. Mm. But that is a consumer-led... <laughs> People buy tickets to some hideously overpriced match tickets, hideously overpriced merchandise, yeah. Sky subscriptions. That's just run away. That's a commercial thing that's just run away with itself. It's no longer the, the game of the working man that, that I can see. And, I mean, if they want to pay themselves that sort of money, that's up to them. Uh, I, I personally think that it's just ridiculous getting... Mm half a million quid away. It's a lot of money, you know, something around three, four hundred thousand pound a week. Yes. It is it's it's an awful lot. And <clears throat> there's all the arguments, oh well, they don't do it for very long. Their career is gonna be quite short. But I mean they earn more on, in a yes. week than I earn in ten <laughs> yes, years. Yeah. Know? We I don't really have any sympathy <laughs> with that. But yeah, it's a lot of the time when we look at these super rich people and we, we don't like them or we say we don't like them, it's because we're, we're jealous and we wish we had that money. If I had that amount of money, of course I'd give the United Nations $6 billion. I mean, how much money does the United Nations actually get every year from all the countries in the world? It's a I, small amount. I, I, I would imagine that uh, perhaps they could save some of that and, <laughs> use, and put the £6 billion. But yeah, it's a very, very difficult thing. But I think one of the one of the worries that we've seen very recently with this, with him taking over Twitter, and, and one of the things sort of from an LGBT perspective is he has friends and supporters and he uh, he has supported people who are very anti-trans mm. and all, all that kind of thing and i think the danger is when he says i'm buying twitter because i want to make sure that it remains as a beacon of free speech what he actually means is i'm going to allow the likes of obviously he, he doesn't know graham linham because he's a pointless <laughs> smudge on humanity but the likes of that to air their views unmarked whereas if anyone challenges them they'll be blocked and removed the only the flip side of that coin i oh god i hate twitter so much it makes no I, i've this past couple of weeks has been all this r.i.p twitter and all this bullshit yeah <laughs> of course you're going to come off twitter as soon as elon musk oh yeah seals yeah. it of course you are love yeah there are a lot of What's the label I'm looking for? Not, not, not just virtue signalers, but um, sort of social justice warriors. They're hateful. They're hateful the way that they, if you say anything, they will find any reason to find that somebody is a phobe or anti this or anti that from the most innocuous things. And I've watched Twitter pylons and they are insane from people that claim to be champions of, of a particular cause. It could be anything. It could be trans rights, uh, gay rights, etc., or any rights that you care to think of. But their viewpoint and their vitriol is just absolutely insane. And you think, you're far worse than the people that you're attacking. And nobody stops that because they are perceived to be, they've got the correct view. I always say that, you know, you can go off how insane somebody's going to be by the number of flags and virtue signaling <laughs> symbols they've got in their Twitter handle. That's a measure of how liberal, tolerant and inclusive they are is how many flags they've got because it's, it, they're just going to be absolutely awful. There's no other viewpoint at all that they're prepared to listen to, but they're allowed on Twitter. I mean, don't get me wrong, people like Donald Trump, uh, uh, he, he was thrown off Twitter because he incited a riot that just... Uh, this is a, a former president. Or was mm. he still the president? I can't remember now. When the, I think he was that, on his way out. He was on his way out, out, certainly. But he was thrown off Twitter for inciting a riot. Mm. That's a that's a legitimate reason, yeah, I think. Fair enough, yeah. I don't have the problem with, again, 
again, I will put this with the caveat that I've not read everything. I do need to, <laughs> I promise boys and girls, I will dive into this this year. From what I've seen of J.K. Rowling and Graham Linehan and the likes and James Draves and what have you, I've not seen anything overtly hateful. What I've seen is fragments that have been taken out of context and spun in media articles to be hateful out of context, and then they've been piled on. Again, I've not read everything I don't know. If there, if there's some horrifically anti-something def- definitive statement that I've missed, I will bloody well find it, because I'm determined we'll have a, a proper measured debate on this at some <laughs> point. I think the problem that you've got with Twitter is it's just hateful, full stop. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. There are so few nice measured debates. You can be as free speech as you like, but every single person that I've seen on Twitter that claims to champion free speech, the second that you say something they don't agree with, they will turn. Yeah. (laughs) The things when you're talking about about Joanne. (laughs) Oh, your first name terms now. No, the the, re- the reason why I uh, uh, refer to her as Joanne is because she deliberately chose the name J.K. Rowling because people wouldn't assume she was a woman because she thought she'd sell more books mm. and people thought she was a man. But nobody else is allowed to uh, to express how they want to express themselves. Just just her. But- <laughs> that, well, that wasn't. No, that, I, I, I'm not getting into this debate. I don't know enough yet. So. Park it. <laughs> yeah, no. But the thing about her is that things aren't, they're not taken out of context. She she very rarely writes anything down the way you could say, oh, look, here's Joanne being transphobic. What she does is she likes and retweets people who are, you know, mm. are, are full of hate. There's there's a, a case going <clears throat> going through at the moment at the Employment Tribunal where evil bitch Alison Daly is uh I'm not suing. familiar with her work. No, no, she's uh well she's she's another horrendous uh, bigot. <laughs> and she's 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 suing Stonewall, you know, the uh, yes, LGBT the charity, charity for something. And she's managed to raise uh, five hundred thousand pounds for this employment tribunal, and Joanne has given her money and is supporting her for things like that. And it's just she hasn't said, you know, oh, I yeah, Alison, I completely agree with your bigoted views, but she just does things like that. There was a I, oh, it was the um, transgender day of visibility a few weeks uh, ago. Yes, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do, yeah. And lots of uh, lots of things going on. You, you, usually on social media, that you know they don't really have big debates and things like that. But it was around about the time that the uh, there was the uproar about the conversion therapy ban, mm. and there was uh, big protests going on from trans people who were saying, you know, please don't shut us out of the ban. Which obviously, as we discussed, we- <laughs> but yeah, anyway. But on on that day which was supposed to be celebrating sort of trans people and, and, and process in favour of trans people. J.K. Rowling went out for lunch with the members of a, a group of lesbians. I can't remember the name of the group, but who are anti-trans. And I, actually, you know, that's part of the slogan. We, you know, we hate yeah. trans people. And there was photos of her and she tweeted what a great day she had. And she chose that day to do that because she knew what the significance of the day and she knew. So there was nothing in her thing saying, hey, you know, look at us getting together, hating trans people. What she did was she knew that all her followers would know that. It's dog whistling, it's called. Oh, right. <laughs> but, you, but as you say, we'll discuss it. Uh, you teach me something new all the time. Uh, but on the, on the other side of that argument is that's freedom of speech as mm. well. And the only thing that I'm, because I have, I have no strong leanings either way. You know, you, you lot carry on. I'm just listening <laughs> intently, wondering what the hell's going on a lot of the time. But you can't have one without you. Oh, well, I say you can't. That's the world we live in. You need to now have the right viewpoint. And if you don't have the right mm. viewpoint, you'll just be cancelled. But who decides what is right? I mean, I, no, I, nobody's cancelling. Like no. people like Rowling and Piers Morgan complaining about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. It slipped out. <laughs> But complaining that they're being cancelled, she's got something like 14 million followers on social media. 
he has just got his own, I mean, it's on a made up TV channel that no one's ever going to watch, but he's got a prime time show on which he, his first show was complaining about cancel culture. How can you complain that you're being canceled when you, oh, but anyway. Well, yeah. I don't, I, I, there's certain people complain about being canceled and, and no, you're not guys. You, you partly because they, and then they're always the super rich. Yes. Yeah. Because they, they're now above the level of, of that where it, it ceases to matter anymore. You, you've made you, you've made your pile. It's not going to make any difference whether <laughs> yeah. you are or not. But it is prime. I will stand by this. It's primarily Twitter that does this because mm. things kick off and they're always on Twitter. It's never. <laughs> it's never on Facebook. It's never on anything else. It's always Twitter that cancels people. And we've seen it both. Seen it before. Where something which isn't an entirely unreasonable statement is piled on or taken out of context. And rapidly ramped up into something to the, within hours mm. where somebody is just a, a social pariah for something that wasn't goose stepping across Poland. <laughs> it was, it was just a, either opening a, a debate or, or a, a, something that the bird app is just this horrible <laughs> echo chamber of hysteria. I would happily see it shut down tomorrow, but if, I didn't think that something would immediately spring up in its place. It's just, that's the way the world is. I don't yeah. think Elon Musk buying it and saying it's going to be a freedom of speech platform is going to make any difference. It is a, pl- a, speed, a freedom of speech platform now. Yeah. So long as you're not a middle-aged white male, in which case you will be cancelled or you will have a Twitter ban for anything. The, the world has gone completely the opposite way. I am now the exact demographic that is ripe for being thrown off and banned and cancelled. I am a middle-aged white male with no particular LGBT leanings. So I am the enemy of the world mm, because uh, that's, uh, I must hate everything because that's <laughs> the way the world is. If, if you're not with us, you're against us. It's that mentality and the world just isn't like that. And you know, People aren't like that. No. Not in the real world. No. I know, and that's it. We do pick up on things, but then there's also plenty out there that is not being taken out of context. But yeah, it, I mean, Twitter, as you say, it just it just amplifies everything. Everyone, oh, I say everyone, uh, people are saying, oh, well, if this purchase, Elon Musk buys it, I'm going off Twitter. No, you're not. No, you won't. Because you, <laughs> you put your phone down for five minutes and you're like, oh, what am I going to do with now? What, who am I going to argue with now? <laughs> So, yeah, I think uh, uh, we should maybe draw it to uh, to a close and get out the feather boas and decide, feather or not, Elon Musk is a, a figure of major importance. What do you think? He's definitely a figure of importance, or and he'll go down in history. Mm. Uh, as you say, he's done lots of interesting stuff. He has spent a lot of money on things that, as an outsider, we sort of think... I wouldn't do that. But then again, if you had that kind of money, would you not build a spaceship and go into space? Uh, so, but yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of his. I think uh, particularly his buy, buying of Twitter, uh, just because a couple of people called him nasty names, is is a little bit childish. He does remind me a little bit of that guy. And I've been trying to remember for the whole episode of The Simpsons, who you know, the Bond villain. A really early episode of The Simpsons where he Homer gets a job. <laughs> oh what's, what's yes, called? Herb is it? No, it's not Herb. That was yeah. He's got this entire. He's this great employer, and he's, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah. But he's, there's all this Bond esque stuff going on in the background. Yeah. I, I definitely think that we're, we're going to get uh, some kind of reveal in the next few years that he he's actually bought Twitter because he's going to control our minds and we're all going to turn into zombies. But uh, as long as we keep an eye out for that. I think he's the Riddler. Yeah, he could be. <laughs> uh, we've, put, got you, we've got you, Elon. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things, as you say, he's made the money. It's up to him what he spends it on, as long as it's not actual evil. <laughs> so, so I think in terms of a figure of interest and uh, who knows what's going to happen next, he's definitely something worth keeping an eye on. I'd say, let's go four. I, I'm, I've got to give the guy four. <laughs> yes, I, I was, I was wondering where you were going to go with this. <laughs> Just as one of those figures in history, he is mm. going to be. He's all sciency and tech, and that's very much my thing. I keep a, a very close eye on tech, mm. and 
What he's doing is interesting. I think he's got. A, I don't think we've. Uh, he's got anywhere near his full potential yet. I wouldn't be surprised if he does actually end up becoming the world's first trillionaire because mm. he's not that old. He's only what is he? Early fifties now, maybe. Possibly, maybe not even maybe that. Not even that no. So there's a long way to go, and he's already a quarter of the way there, and it's only <laughs> going to get exponentially, yeah, richer. So uh, yeah, um, uh, it's four or five. For Elon. Excellent. We'll keep an eye on him. Maybe we'll revisit him uh, when we're either bowing down to our new <laughs> world leader. <laughs> the, the, it will be an Elon Musk appreciation <laughs> podcast, as will all podcasts in the future. <laughs> Excellent. What have you got to round us off? Well, I thought because we have been had a bit of a downer on Twitter mm. to, tonight, so I thought we could maybe mention something good about Twitter. We'll have a nine bob notable mention. This is a person who I I follow on Twitter. I'm not sure if you do or not. No, Max Morgan doesn't ring a bell. No. So Max Morgan, an ordinary person who is married and has a, a teenage son and a dog, fairly sort of ordinary uh, things in life. A few years ago, they came out as gay and started tweeting about it and just sort of tweeting about the, the general life. And uh, one, of the, one of the very funny things was tw- sort of tweeting about how homophobic his wife was. <laughs> and they're still married and they still live together in the same house. Presumably because they get on well with each other and they've got this teenage son and it just works. And yeah, and it's just very funny observations. But then uh, towards the end of last year, they came out as non-binary. Okay. And so uses they, them pronouns. So the tweets have become more and more about that side of things. But they're just really, really funny. The language that Max uses (laughs) is... Deplorable. I mean, you know, we just couldn't read, even read out any of the tweets on, but it's all, it's very funny. It's very on the nose. And also, they do quite longer pieces about. Um, so they're, they're very big. Obviously, since coming out as non-binary, they've been very big on sort of trans and non-binary rights. Yes. And just sort of calling out people on Twitter who are hateful or and and who and not just piling on people that what you were talking about but generally just responding to people who are who are being stupid and but also they have generated a lot of hateful comments towards them you know people like calling calling them names and it's just the way that they respond to me it's really really funny but some of the the writings are really quite moving obviously it's a huge thing to go through coming out as gay and mm. then non-binary one of the one of one of the things last week was they were trying to decide because obviously uh, their son still refers to uh, to Max's dad and they said well that's that's a little bit too masculine for my liking so I'm trying, I'm trying to find something that they can call me that you know that's not as masculine as dad so I've settled on fancy Brenda <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, and then, so there's this just and then there's just description of the son's response. You know, like a 14 year old boy, I think he is just response. Like you, you can no longer call me dad. I would now like you to refer to me as fancy Brenda. And it's just, it's very funny. You should definitely check them out. They uh, will probably say quite a few things that you don't agree with or that you think, oh, that's a bit too far. But it is, it's very funny and very, uh, very moving. It actually does sound like something that would be wildly entertaining. So, yeah, Max Morgan. Max Morgan, at Spiller of Tea. is the Oh, that does ring a bell, actually. So maybe I do follow him, but it, for some reason it doesn't. I need to be fair. I don't tend to read Twitter. Mm. I, I just post on it. Yeah, when I'm <laughs> and then go and then look away. <laughs> when I'm posting podcast stuff, and and that's about the limit of my Twitter because it, it just winds me up. <laughs> it's just uh, there's so many people on mute now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, uh, we'll check it out. Excellent. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Right, well, we've rambled on as usual. We'll tie it up and we'll be back again next week. Bye, kids. Bye. (laughs) 
Nine Bob Node featured Paul Isles Rush and Ken Moss. Title music was by Mark Scheiman, and the program was produced by Maverick Productions. For more information, please visit maverickproductionsuk.blogspot.com or find us on social media.